Hello, um, this is a journal to me or future me. Um, maybe if I post it online, people watching, I don't know. Um, I just thought I'd record this to go through some of my journey from um, probably a year and a half ago up till now. Tomorrow is my, uh, I'm having a tea lift, which is a trans something. <laughs> Um, lumbar interbody fusion um, from my L5 S1 vertebrae, so a single level fusion, um, due to disc degeneration. And so, in the last two months, I've had two different microdiscectomies, um, both of which have resulted in re herniations within two weeks of each other. Um, the most recent one it wasn't really a I just kind of had pain all the, way, all the way through from the surgery, so it could have happened straight away after the surgeon did it. So, um, yeah, so I've been in a bit of pain for the past two weeks. I'm uh, feeling a bit better now. I can't stand up straight, but overall the pain's not that bad. But I also am on oxycodone and pandol and anti-inflammatories. Well, I was up anti-inflammatories up until the past couple of days. Uh, so that's probably why the pain's not too bad. Um, and gabapentin as well at the moment. But, but anyway, my story is uh, about one year ago, um, I had, I don't really know what did it. It could have been, I play social netball, or I did, um, I also boulder sometimes, like the climbing walls. Um, I had back pain after both doing both of those things at, at different points, kind of within a month of each other, two months of each other. So it's probably one of those things that, that caused it, but I had a disc protrusion um, at my, S1 or L5 S1 uh, disc, which unbeknownst to me at the time um, was gradually causing more and more nerve compression of my S1 nerve root. Um, so I actually went to five different physios in, uh, in that year. Each of them gave me a different, um, a different prognosis, I guess, oh, sorry. <laughs> a different diagnosis. Um, I also went to a couple of GPs and they all told me, again, it's probably nothing serious, just get off it for a couple of weeks and wait till the pain stops and then go to physio and start, go back to normal, basically. Take some pain meds, you'll be fine. Um, at the beginning of last year, I, or kind of April last year, I guess, I started to get these pains sitting down. Um, if I'd sit down for more than half an hour at a time, I'd start to get glute pains in my left glute. Uh, that got worse and worse. I couldn't sit down for more than 15 minutes at a time without searing pain in my glute. Eventually that kind of progressed down my leg. Um, I was still getting no real back pain at that point. I got the initial back pain from the injury, but it just kind of went down my leg um, when I wasn't doing anything. Initially sport kind of helped that, so it would hurt sitting down and then once I started to run around, it would get better, go away. Um, at some point it just kind of shifted to Sitting down was no longer painful, but running around, walking around too much really hurt. Um, and then one of the days, um, I my foot started to go numb. I was actually at the shops and getting groceries, and uh, my foot just went numb. <laughs> I told, said to my girlfriend, oh, that's weird. I can't feel my foot anymore. <laughs> and she said, all right, you're making a doctor's appointment again for tomorrow, and we're telling them this. Um and that's probably the first time a doctor actually took me seriously and didn't just say, oh, no, it's just, just back pain. It's just, you know, you'll be fine. Just the muscular or a bulge or something like that. I didn't get any imaging. No one told me to get a CT or an MRI of it. Anyway, so I went to my GP and she said, that's not normal. You need to go see a specialist or a physio that specializes in this. And so I went to go see a physio that actually specialized in, in back pain. Again, the first time anyone's actually said I should go see a physio that specializes in this. I was just going to the student physios at the university I work at, <laughs> which were cheaper um, up till that point. Um, and the physio immediately said, all right, this is, you know, quintessential S1 nerve root pain. I was having pain all the way down the back of my leg, um, numbness of my foot all apart from my big toe. My straight leg raise was horrible. My right leg, I could get to 90 degrees. My left leg, I couldn't even get past 30 degrees. Um, and she said, yeah, you definitely need to go see a, 
a surgeon or at least get an MRI. So I went to get an MRI um, and I went to go see my surgeon, um, Dr. Paul Lucina at Brisbane Private Hospital here in Queensland, uh, in Australia. Um, and the MRI showed that I had, I can't remember how big the herniation was, but it was quite a substantial herniation. The MRI was significant. Um, and basically if you Google L5 S1 disc herniations, big herniations, you'll see something that looked like what I have. Um, and it, uh, once we saw that, uh, the disc looked terrible, uh, compared to my other discs, every other one of my discs was perfectly healthy. Um, Dr. Lucina said, yep, all right, has to, you know, no conservative treatment is going to work here. It's been too long. It's been about a year probably for that, that disc to be out protruding um, through, the, through the disc, through the annulus. Um, he said a steroid shot might work, but steroid shots just reduce inflammation. And there was actually no inflammation there. It was actually quite, yeah, it was just the, just pressing on that nerve a lot. Um, so he said... It, the, the way he saw it, there was only two options. There was a discectomy or there was a, a fusion. And he didn't think at that point um, a fusion was necessary. It was be jumping the gun a bit. So um, I think two weeks later, I had a, my first discectomy. Um, went off without a hitch. As soon as I woke up, I had absolutely no leg pain. Um, I had a bit of back pain from the wound that actually kind of went away within a week. Um, I had a few flare-ups of nerve pain here and there, but overall it was pretty pretty minimal um looking back on it now at least I probably thought my life was over at the time but um whenever I had a flare-up that it was it was pretty harmless in the end um then I had a two-week checkup I went to see the physios they said yep you're doing you're doing brilliantly I could do everything that I could beforehand I felt like a million bucks um in fact so good that I asked my physio if I could hop back on my bike I'd do a bit of cycling um on the weekends and she said yeah no problem you can just um, just do start off really slow. So just go around the, the block once, um, and you can work your way up from there. Cycling's low impact. So it's probably good for me. Um, and so I did that that afternoon. I went home, I got on my bike, I went around the block, got off. I felt perfect before that I was getting, every time I got off the bike, I'd have searing pain down the back of my legs. I got off the bike then and it was just, I felt like I was 18 again. <laughs> I was, honestly, I was great. And then three days later I had, um, it wasn't actually one incident. I kind of went to bed on Friday night and woke up on Saturday morning and I just had back pain again and I thought, oh shit, <laughs> this isn't good. And then it got subtly worse over that weekend. And by Monday, it was just terrible again. Um, searing back pain. I had pain in my glute again and I thought, ah, oh, this is re-herniated. Um, I went for an MRI the, the next day and of course it had re-herniated, um, bigger than the first time. Apparently, um, and so I went and see my surgeon the next day after that, and he said he gave me the, the bad news, obviously, and and said this one's fresh, so we could probably try an epidural um, an injection, which I did. So I had that, and that did nothing. In fact, it probably made my back pain a bit worse, um, which at least within the next couple of days, and then it kind of went back to where it was. Um, so he booked me in for a second discectomy. He said at that point we could have a discectomy or we could have a fusion. Um, and I opted for the discectomy, just wanted to dry again. Um, and so we did that. Um, and then I woke up and I felt a bit better than I did. At least my back pain was gone. My leg pain was still there. Um, I thought that might've just been the nerve being inflamed and so did, so did everyone else. Um, just because I'd had two surgeries pretty close together. So I waited uh, a week and that was only getting worse. And then um, a week later, I went back for my two week checkup and it was just worse and worse and worse and worse. I couldn't, I couldn't stand up straight. I could barely bend over. Um, my left side, my left leg, I couldn't walk without it. It just sending pains down my left side. Um, and so we we're like, okay, we'll just, we'll give it a bit more time. But I also went on to gabapentin and some long lasting oxycodone, all that kind of stuff to deal with the pain. Anyway, that was on uh, a Thursday and then the Saturday. So two days later in the morning, I was just in bed and I had these horrible cramps in my hip and my left back, hip and leg. Um, 
every uh, 30 seconds to a minute they would come on uh, and they'd last about 10 seconds each and it just felt like my whole body was just crunching um, so bad that I was yelling out in pain for it. It was really, really bad. Um, so bad that we called an ambulance because we just didn't know if it was going to stop. It was just horrible. Couldn't move. Um, anyway, the paramedics came. Um, my family contacted the, uh, the hospital. It was a weekend, so it wasn't really open. Uh, it's a private hospital. There's no emergency rooms. So um, we contacted the hospital. They contacted my surgeon, uh, and he organised transport to the hospital. Well, we'd already called the ambulance, but he organised the ambulance to take me to the Brisbane private hospital instead of the hospital that was closest to me. Um, and they they took me there. They'd given me a couple of, like, a green whistle and that kind of thing before I came down the stairs of my apartment, which was fun, uh, as you can imagine. And I got to the hospital and they had a bed waiting for me, which was great. I went down for an MRI straight away and um, he came to see me that afternoon and said, yeah, look, your disc is gone. Um, so we had it again. It's almost bone on bone. There's a massive amount of inflammation in my bone, um, which would explain the pain I've been having. And it's time for a fusion. So he said, um, yeah, he just said, you, we've probably got to have a fusion. He actually stayed here for a long time talking to me, which is great. And um, explaining it to my family and my girlfriend and stuff. And he said, think on it. Um, you'll come and see me on Monday and you'll decide. Anyway, um, I mean, I didn't really have much of a choice. It was either to live like this for the next couple of months or, or go through with it. So I think I said, yeah, okay, on Monday we'll go through with it. Um, surgery was scheduled for that Wednesday, so not much turnaround time. Um, and so it's Tuesday night now. Uh, and yeah, here I am. So tomorrow morning I'll go down to surgery at about, my surgery scheduled about 7, 7.30, I think. Uh, so I'll wake up at six, have a shower, go downstairs, be knocked out, <laughs> three hour, four hour surgery, I'll wake up and I'll have my two vertebrae tentatively fused together. Sorry, I think that clunked out for a second there, my headphones. Anyway, um, I'll have my vertebrae fused together and um, yeah. He's warned me about the, the pain of the wound. I'm going to have a PCA, a wound drain, um, this thing called a pain buster or blaster or something like that. It goes in into my wound, the liver's local anesthetic in, um, and a catheter, which I'm not excited about, but it is what it is. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to make another one of these videos when I wake up, when I'm able to when I <laughs> remember who I am and um, we'll see if the pain's really as bad as they say. Okay, just thought I'd get my story out there. Hopefully there's no 26 year olds. Oh yeah, I'm 26. Hopefully there's no 26 year olds who are going through the same thing. Hopefully discectomies have been done and have been successful. I'm just the unlucky few that it's not successful. Um, in hindsight, my disc was too degenerated for it to actually work well. There's no way anyone could have known that. I had to try it, so here I am.